Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's that time of year when things are winding down and the days are getting shorter, so we decided to revisit some impressive ruins on a cold, frosty morning. The remains are part of one of the most important medieval residences in the south of England. Packed full with important visitors and a wealth of history, this is one place we think is a must visit. So join us on an explore today at Bishop's Waltham Palace. The first building we come across was once the lodgings, originally a timber framed structure, but later strengthened in the 14th century. The surviving part of the lodging range was adapted into a farmhouse and remained in use right up until the mid 20th century. Now it's home of Bishop Waltham's Town Museum, open only on weekends and run by friendly volunteers. Unfortunately, on our visit we were unable to head inside, but we plan to revisit again soon and venture inside and around the museum. Next we make our way into the bakehouse and the brew house of the palace. On the left hand side nearest the farmhouse, this is where the all important beer was brewed and the other half, which we're able to walk around, is the bakehouse. You can make this out by the modest remains of a bread oven. Typically in the middle ages, palaces and wealthy residences would have brewed their own beer and baked their own bread. Beer was especially important because you could never be too sure that the water would be safe to drink, so it was the norm to drink beer. Even the children would drink it, but given a weaker strength of course. This building was built in the late 14th century by the Bishop William of Wickham. Interestingly, he was probably the most famous of all the bishops of Winchester. He remained as a leading figure throughout his career in English and European politics, right up until his death in 1404. Later, in the 15th century, Henry Cardinal Beaufort renovated and extended the building and raised it by a story so that the bishop's household would have had much more accommodation. Around this chapel, now in a sunken area, is a 12th century crypt, built alongside a chapel here for Bishop Henry. And in 1416, Cardinal Beaufort replaced the upper stage of this chapel with a newer one, and the foundations are seen here and on the left hand side. Unfortunately, there is not much to see here now, as all that remains is the stubs of the chapel. Taking a short wander and heading underneath the overhanging branches of the evergreen trees, 
looking towards the West Tower and into what was once the Great Chamber. In the south range of the palace, this included the private apartments for the bishop and his family, and included a beautiful Great Chamber at first floor level. The bishops of Winchester were amongst some of the most powerful men in England of the time. This meant that royal visitors were frequently wined and dined here, including that of Henry VIII, who entertained the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V when they formed an alliance against their rival and signed a treaty to invade France. Incredibly, it was this year in 2022 that it had been 500 years since Henry VIII walked in this same palace. It's as if we are now walking in his footsteps. Queen Mary, Henry VIII's daughter, also stayed at Bishop's Waltham before her wedding to Charles V's son and the future Philip II of Spain. If you're having a proper look around the right hand side, you can see the two different thicknesses in the walls. There's an inner wall with a narrow gap and then an outer wall. The inner of the two walls running along the right hand side was the original 12th century wall then in the 14th century, William of Wickham wanted a much grander and bigger great chamber at first floor level, so he demolished the upper part of the wall and built a new outer wall. Another way to see this is the roof lines in the West Tower, two different ones that you can make out just in the stonework. The tower was the place where the bishop had his own private apartments, and at the very top of this tower is a finely carved fireplace and window that was added in the 15th century, but you can still just imagine how posh and grand these apartments once would have been. Just outside the Great Hall is a latrine pit, and where the chamber pots would have been emptied. They didn't have a filtering system back then, so it would have just been put into the pit. Then once the household and the bishops left the residence for a day or two, an unfortunate individual known as a gong scourer would have come along with a spade bucket and cart. He would empty it out and carried the contents away to use as manure and as a fertiliser. This had to be one of the worst jobs in medieval England. Following on and into the Great Grand Hall, which is the centrepiece of the palace, and many of the servants or the members of the palace would have had lodgings here too, and slept where they ate. But this particular building would have had a constant scene of activity, with important guests and members of the household using the hall on a daily occurrence. The hall was first built in the later 12th century, when Henry of Blois returned and built the palace but it was magnificently rebuilt in the 13th century, again by William of Wickham. And if you're able to imagine it, the very end wall closest to the West Tower was the higher end of the hall. This was where the bishop would have sat and ate his meals, with the rest of his household sitting on long tables along the length of the hall. And the beautiful windows that we see would have let in so much light. And when not ruinous, the windows would have been mimicked on the other side with a roof being of detailed timber. Our final building that we enter is the service rooms, a pantry and a buttery, where the bread and wine was dispensed and kept. And the kitchen also, arguably the most important in the building. You can tell this from the well, and this was the palace's water supply. The kitchen would have been a very busy place, with up to 20 to 30 people working tirelessly to meet the demands of the bishops and their ever-growing household, which at one time could have been as many as 500 people. Visiting Bishop Waltham has been great. We come here often for a walk and just across from the palace ruins is a small lake that is really nice to have a wonder. The palace and the parking 
are free and just outside the complex with plenty of signposting. A visit here would be ideal if you're visiting nearby Wolvesey Castle or Winchester Cathedral. But mostly what we enjoyed about coming here was learning about those historic figures that walked here and we got the chance to follow their footsteps and imagine life back then. So if you've liked the video, please be sure to hit that like button, click the notification bell and consider subscribing to our Patreon and the channel if you haven't already. All links are in our bio, please check them out. We want to say a massive thank you to our Patreons and to everyone choosing to watch the videos. Thank you. And also not forgetting to wish every single person and their families a very Merry Christmas. We really hope you all enjoy the festive season, whatever you choose to do. We'll see you next week for the last video of the year. Till next time.